Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a talk about what I think is the most important tip for when you're designing for 3D printing. So we're going to talk about this in Blender, but this is true of every single other program. But the tip that I'm going to give to make sure that you can fix this problem is going to be Blender specific. So what is the biggest issue when you're designing for 3D printing? Well, I would argue that that is that eventually you're going to need more than one part because of just the way printing occurs. And normally that means you're going to want something to be able to be joined together. And while we could just glue flat surface to flat surface, it generally pays to have something keyed into it. If I use this cube to demonstrate, let's just scale this up on everything but the Z axis. And then I'm going to shift an A mesh and bring in a cube. Let's G and set that up slightly. And imagine that we've got, let's E and then S, then extrude that up. Let's imagine we've got these two bits that we want to fit together. And we've designed this sticking out portion just here. Let's just G and Z that up a bit so that these can go together nicely. Now, this looks relatively easy in Blender. We can just Shift and D and then click and then use Ball Tool, which allows us to press Control and Minus to do a really quick Boolean. And then what we can do is just H to hide the cutter. And what we've got here is the hole and then the object that's going to fit into it. Perfect. Except for it's too perfect. The hole that this is fitting into is exactly the same size as the block that's going into it. And in reality, that just won't work. There'd be too much friction. Beyond that, when we 3D print objects, they actually, regardless of if it's resin or filament, are going to be slightly wider. So that will be slightly wider, and the hole it's going to be going into is also going to be slightly infilled, because resin will always be just the tiniest bit overexposed. Or if it's filament, it's just going to spread out a little bit as it's extruded from the nozzle onto the surface below. So this doesn't work. But there's normally an easy solution to this, except for this solution does not necessarily work. Now, that solution is that when you take your object here, you can just press S and scale it down slightly. And that means that it now has a little bit of a gap between the hole and the object that's going to fit into it. So that works great. At least it does when you don't have any concave sections to your geometry. As soon as that happens, you're going to have a problem. And the big deal with that is that there is one shape in particular that is made up of lots of concave sections, and it's probably one of the more interesting ones to be able to 3D print, and that is a bolt. So let's have a look at that. Now, usefully, Blender very quickly allows us to make a bolt. In fact, we don't really need to make it. We just press Shift and A and come down to bolt. Now, in Blender 4.2, for some reason, this is tiny. So we are going to have to press S to scale this up. I'm just going to press 1000 on my keyboard to make that a decent size. I might even actually just scale that up a bit more. Let's control and A and apply the scale. That's very important in 3D printing. You can see here that we've got this massively scaled up. I'm going to apply that scale. And we're going to make a board for this to go into. Now, bolts are great because if you put it the other way up, this will 3D print very, very well, especially this one from Blender with the way it's been designed. So I've actually got one printing here, and you can see how easily it prints, obviously sped up. But the problem with this is, while it's printing in the corner, that we've got all of these concave bits here. It's what's going to make the thread work. I mean, you can't just pull the bolt out. And these are really useful for things like pegboards and stuff like that. So it's definitely useful to be able to create a shape like this. If we just shift a mesh and bring in a cube, let's just make that 16 millimeters, something like that. And then S and shift and Z somewhere about there. Now, if we want to do the same trick again, that's, uh, in fact, G and set that down a little bit and then come here. This won't work. In fact, let's shift and D and bring copy over to the side so we can show what will work over here. So just to demonstrate this, this won't work. If I shift and D to make a duplicate and then click on the cube and control and minus, we get our cutout. So I've got my original bolt here. Let's just move that out of the way. And we've got our threaded hole that it's meant to fit into. But, as I said, it is perfectly the same size, which means this just won't work. So we could come back to our cutter, that's here, and we could just scale this up. So let's just S to scale it up. But as soon as we do that, the threads, the concave sections, become not aligned. Now, anyone who's used to Blender, you can see that the origin of this object, that's the thing that it's scaling from, is actually at the bottom. But even if I move the object origin to its geometry, so now the origin, that blue dot, is there, if I scale it up here, well, that still hasn't worked. 
I can G and Z that down so that this now fits great here with a little bit of a gap. So notice the gap between the two objects. This should allow this to accommodate the expanding plastic or overexposed resin. But as soon as we go further down, they're not aligned because of the concave nature of this shape. And you'll never get this to work. So the only thing you can do is keep the hole the exact same size and hopefully your bolt will fit into it. Except if we see a print of these parts and these were printed at exactly the same size as each other, you can see, as I said, it just won't fit. So this is always gonna fail. What we need to do instead is have a way of expanding out the shape, not based on the origin. We need to base it on each of these edges and ask each of these edges to move outwards. And we can do that. Blender has a tool for this. So we're gonna do this over here. Let's just shift and D. So we've got a duplicate. And what we're gonna do is go into face mode. I'm gonna press A to select all the faces. And we're gonna use a tool so over here called the shrink fatten tool. Now we can use this over here, but I always just remember it is Alt S as the shortcut. So with all the faces selected, I'm gonna press Alt and S, and then we can now move all of the faces away. And you'll notice that this moves away in a direction that's perpendicular to each of the faces, something we call the normals. If we just come into our view here, I can show the normals of the faces, so let's make those about there and you can see this is the direction that each of these faces is going to move out so alt and s and you can see them moving along that but blender is also working out the intersections of each face as they go where they would generally join together for example just here on the corner so we can move out somewhere here let's just turn that visibility of the normals off and this will then work great now, I'm just going to undo this. There is a limitation on this if we isolate it, and that is that we can't let it get past any of the already existing edges. So, for example, this edge here and this edge here, if they ever interact, this will cause a problem for Blender. There are ways of getting around it, but if I press A, Alt and S, and take this too far, you can see that we lose the edge that should be here. Instead, it is on the inside of the geometry. We get this horrible overlap problem and you get a face that goes all the way from there to there, and this is not good. Blender won't work with this. So there are limitations. As I said, there are ways of fixing this, but that's probably a topic for another video. So let's just Alt and S. We'll expand that out. Let's come out of isolation mode with forward slash, and then we can now, object mode here, Control and minus, and then H. And now we've got, you can see the hole on this object is wider than the screw that's going to fit into it, which even all the way through the length of this screw doesn't deviate and doesn't cause this elongation that we saw in the other example. So if I take my version of this that I 3D printed, we can see that we now have a screw that will be able to fit perfectly into this board, effectively making like a giant Meccano or Ikea set. And this is really handy if you wanna make like a DIY board that goes on your wall that you can then design the pieces that will hang off of it, which you see loads of examples in DIY stores and for various other purposes. And with Blender, it's so easy for you to design these yourself. Now, one thing I do want to quickly note, just for anyone that uses Blender quite regularly, if you have an add-on, which I would recommend you use, called ND, let me just come down and activate ND. I've got a couple of videos on ND, I'll put some links in the description, but if you use ND, Let's just shift and D to bring another duplicate out and then go into face mode. If you press Alt and S in this instance, it brings up the sketch menu, but you'll notice the people who have been making ND have thought about this and leave the standard shrink fatten at the bottom of this menu so you can still do this really easily. So if you're using ND and you see that slightly different menu, that's what you've got. So there's no problem here. So there you go. That is our big problem that often comes up for people designing for 3D printing and a very simple tool that allows us to solve it. Have a great day, guys.